Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is really just going to be some updates on some of the stuff that's gone on this week and I just want to talk to you guys about really sort of three stroke four things specifically. The first we're going to go over the Skydio 2 because there's quite a lot to talk about on this and I was lucky to actually speak to Adam the CEO of Skydio earlier in the week when I was on the SUAS News podcast and there's some stuff I want to update you guys on with regards to that and we'll do that first of all. Secondly we're going to talk about the bite frost system from Fat Shark because that's now entered beta and then third I'm going to quickly talk a little bit about the cube with the orange and the ADSB because I've actually got one in hand. Now I'm doing this video a little bit differently because we've got it on the camera on my webcam up here and I've got the main thing on screen so I'm going to bounce between them so if it doesn't look like I'm looking at you at any point I do apologize but I'm looking at what's going on on the screen. Right the first thing to talk to you guys about is the Skydio 2 because this has sort of set the internet or the drone industry on storm this week um, and I'm going to give you some of my personal thoughts as well as some info on this. It's hard not to be blown away by what they're showing this new drone is capable of doing. It is looking like an extremely capable piece of kit. You know it is a small Action camera style drone is the term I'm going to use and I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. Um, but it's capable of recording 4K 60 frames a second up to 36 mile an hour top speed. 23 minutes flight time. It does have a three axis gimbal and it has a range of 3.5 kilometers. Now going back to the camera, it is a half point three inch sensor, just like the Mavic 2 Zoom or the original Mavic and the Phantom 4. Um, it's that smaller sensor. So whilst it's not going to quite compete with the Mavic 2 Pro, it is still going to be extremely capable. It is that 4K 60 frames a second HDR and it will record at 100 megabytes a second in H.264 and H.265 so it does have quite a good camera on board and it is three axis stabilized which is the first time we've seen it with them and it means it's going to be pretty much on par with the Mavic 2 Zoom, the Phantom 4 or even the Mavic Air. Now I don't think this drone is a direct competitor for the standard aerial photography drones like the Mavic 2 Pro for instance. For me, this is the drone that GoPro should have released with the Karma. This is an action camera drone designed to get in, get close, and get that amazing footage when you're doing your sports or you're doing, you know, you're doing your racing, you're off-roading and things like that. It's still going to be very capable from an aerial photography point of view, but it isn't strictly aimed at aerial photography. It really is a flying action camera. Now, if it does what they show it can do, it is extremely impressive. You know, there is a lot of horsepower on board this and it has a lot of options and capabilities as well. Now, on Tuesday, when we spoke to Adam on the SUS News podcast, he gave us some extra info and it was available to pre-order from that day for $100 and it's going to cost $999. However, that is the price for the aircraft on its own and to use it, you would then connect it via Wi-Fi to your smartphone. However, you can use it with a remote controller and something called the Skydo Beacon, which allows you to control it separately, but they are optional extras and they basically cost $150 each. Now, you will also notice that the remote controller is quite familiar and the reason for that is it's actually based on the same remote that the Parrot Anafi uses. Now Skydio have done a partnership with Parrot to come up with this remote controller and whilst it looks the same it's not the same software it is not wirelessly compatible either. A lot of people got excited thinking the beacon because it works with the Skydio would work with the uh, an AFI and it won't it is a totally separate system now because of this remote controller and everything there's been a little bit of confusion about what altitude and range the unit has now Skydio is stating up to 3.5 kilometers with the remote controller however it is where altitude comes in when things have got a little bit confusing because people saw a post that it was going to be limited to 100 meters whilst that was correct at the time Skydio I believe have changed their stance on this and they have actually put a post out explaining it and it is as follows based on what flight mode you're using Skydio will currently track a subject and 
and the altitude will be limited and it will be limited to a maximum of 8 meters when you are tracking a person for instance or 16 meters when you are tracking a vehicle however that limitation is when you are not using it with a remote controller or the beacon so that limitation is there if you are just using your smartphone to tell it to track if you use the remote or beacon the maximum height is up to 1640 feet which I think is 500 meters off the top of my head so whilst there is an altitude limitation when you are tracking on its own you can fly up to that maximum altitude as well up to 1640 meters so don't worry it is not limited to 100 meters now, as I've said, the overall spec of this drone is really interesting. You know, you've got six cameras on board for creating that 3D image sensing and that object avoidance or that tracking. Now, each of those cameras is 4K, so it has six individual 4K cameras on board, which are producing a huge amount of data, allowing the Skydio to plumb that into its computer system which is the NVIDIA Jetson TX2 and from that it's mapping out the environment around it and it's allowing it to fly through the trees and do all of that amazing and cool stuff that we've seen it do. You know when you get to the overall specs of this it is looking quite impressive but as I've said from an aerial photography point of view I don't honestly think it's going to be an out and out replacement for something like the Mavic 2 Pro if you're into your action photography or you're into you know tracking and you want the drone to follow you through the woods or track you on your motorcycle honestly I do think this is going to be absolutely superb if it does what it says it's going to do. Now, if we jump down to the main spec, overall, there's nothing scary here at all. Nothing particularly unusual. What is nice is Skydio are specifically stating what the specification of the components are they're using. They're using a Sony IMX577 sensor, half point three inch, 12.3 megapixel. Again, on par with all of the drones using that size of sensor. Um, one little comment I have noticed is the ISO range is okay, but the shutter speed was quite low. It was something, where is it hiding on here? Only up to 1920, which is a bit lower than I would have expected. I'm not sure if that's a mistake or not. There are going to be some situations where that is quite limiting. Not many, but it is something to be aware of. Um... Overall, though, from a specification point of view, it is looking very, very interesting. Now, just to confirm some other stuff on this before I move on, because there are some questions that I asked on the podcast and, and some information as well. As I've said, the altitude is not limited to 100 meters. There are no NFCs built into the Skydio 2 as it stands today. So anyone who buys it on the initial pre-order, there will be no geofencing, no no-fly zones. That is in the US and Canada currently. The Skydio 2 will be coming to Europe and we will see if that is still the case. It is worth mentioning though that in Europe, for instance, within a couple of years, we have to have geofencing. It will be mandatory. So while Skydio are leaving that off currently, there is a point where they will have to put that on board. But as it stands today the Skydio 2 will not ship with any no-fly zones or anything like that. Um, something else I want to mention as well, I've got it highlighted down here, daylight and indoors. The Skydio 2 will not fly at night. Because of the way the, the 3D60 sensing works around the aircraft, it needs a minimum level of light to be able to do that. So the consumer model will not fly in darkness or low-light conditions. I understand as well it won't fly indoors without GPS. It requires GPS to be able to fly. So that is two limitations to be aware of. Um, as I've mentioned, the RC um, is very similar to the RC from Parrot. It is done in combination with them. The beacon, again, is, is completely dedicated to Skydio and it won't work with the NAFI. And with regards to UK and EU users, it is coming. Adam, I had a chat with him um, in the email and after the podcast, and it is going to come, but it is likely to be 2020 now. Now, you can reserve your Skydio 2 for $100. You are going to be into at least 2020 before getting your hands on this now. The initial pre-orders absolutely flew out the door. 
it, the media hype around this has been massive and to be fair to them their marketing campaign has been absolutely outstanding as well the, their social media interaction and everything now they have added on the website a whole host of frequently asked questions as well so you can go on to that and have a look at some of the questions if you've got any this was only added literally in the last 24 hours or so as I understand it and there's some other stuff about what's included uh, with it as well and then they have that little page uh, with the altitude so if you're interested in the Skydio 2, check it out. As I said, I don't think it'll replace the Mavic. Um, I'd love to get my hands on one. I am going to get my hands on one as soon as it's available in the EU and hopefully talk to you guys about it then. Um, moving on to Fat Shark and the Bite Frost system. Right, th there's some stuff I want to explain around this because there is quite a bit of confusion as well. The first thing I'm going to explain is that it is now in beta and it is available to purchase. Now, some people have raised an eyebrow on this saying, hold on a minute, you want us to pay for beta hardware? Basically, yes. Um, Fat Shark are only a small company. There is no way that they can fund sending out expensive systems like this to people for free. So what they have openly said is it is going to be available for people to beta. They are only advising you buy this if you take that into account. There are no guarantees. There are in the sense of that it's going to work perfectly out the door on day one. You will be a tester and you will need to understand that things may not work as they should until they resolve it. I'm not expecting there to be too many hardware changes, specifically that this system has been at 200 milliwatts. It's been said it's capable of up to 400 milliwatts, but they are going to do a one milliwatt version, but it will be different hardware. So if you were to take a punt on the beta system, it wouldn't be able to do the one milliwatt output. They will be releasing an additional ground-based unit, sorry, ear-based end, which is the bite frost ear end, to be able to do it. So this system will hopefully be able to go up to 400, 200 milliwatts out the box, um, but it will not do the one milliwatt. It's $399 if you want to get on board. It isn't cheap. However, that is a subsidized price as well. And to be fair, I'm expecting the price to come in around four to six hundred dollars really for the final product um again this is for guys who really want to get involved um the hardware shouldn't change too much especially the 400 milliwatt version but that doesn't mean it won't now there are some other things i want to explain around the openness of the fat shock platform as well because i used the words Fat Shark are going to move it towards an open HD platform and, and they've said it and others have said it. But I do want to explain what they mean by that because it's not open in the sense of open source. Uh, the Fat Shark Bite Frost system is basically based off something called HD0 by Digimath. Now, they created this system in partnership with Fat Shark, but they basically created it with a analog devices on semiconductor and partners, which are Fat Shark. But Divimath basically designed this system and put it out there. It's been out a little bit of time, actually. I knew about this earlier in the year, but it didn't really get much um, press and people didn't pick up on it. So what it seems is that they've gone into partnership with Fat Shark to create what is known as Bite Frost. If you look at the HD Zero, you know, it is virtually identical. You know, the ground unit, if I look at the Fat Shark Bite Frost, you know, if you look at it, it's got the same connections. Uh, HD0. It is virtually identical. They have the same ground station with uh, four antennas. You know, there are some little changes for Fat Shark, but they, it is the same unit for all intents and purposes. So, what Fat Shark have done is partnered with them on this system. Now, they've said they're not going to keep exclusivity on it. And in my other video, I talked about it and said that it's going to be more of an open HD. What I mean by that is this. It's a Divi Math system made in partnership with Fat Shark. However, Fat Shark are no longer going to retain exclusivity. Other manufacturers are going to be able to approach Divi Math and use it, but that doesn't mean it's open. This system is a proprietary HD system by Divi Math. There is no open standard, there is no standard for the hardware, it is their proprietary system. The only thing that's really going to be open is other companies have the ability to approach Divi Math and work with them on it. 
it isn't that it is entirely open hardware and anyone can go out and do it. DiviMath own the IP for the chipsets involved in making this. So anybody who wants to get involved with this digital HPD, sorry, digital FPV system need to purchase DiviMath's chips and their encoders. So much so that whilst other manufacturers can make cameras, there is an encoder chip as part of their camera that allows it to have the analog HD feed because the camera is HD, but it's analog HD. Quite similar to some of the 1080p analog HD CCTV systems. I've actually got one here and it uses that analog HD system to transmit the video between the camera and the ear end. But there is an encoder chip involved and that encoder chip connects to the ear end and unless that chip is present, it will not accept a HD input. It will only accept an analog SD video input. So again, whilst this system is open to anyone to approach DiviMath and use, it is not the Andra pilot of the digital FPV market. It is going to require companies to purchase DiviMath's IP to be able to use it. So whilst there has been some complaints, for instance, that the DJI system is closed source and it's closed and no one else can use it, this isn't much different when you dig below the surface. Yes, other manufacturers can approach DiviMath and get involved because Fat Shark don't have the exclusivity, but it is very much a proprietary system by DiviMath and anyone who wants to use it is going to have to give them money. And even camera manufacturers who want to make cameras to support it are going to have to give them money to use their encoder chip to be able to get that HD signal. So it isn't strictly open. It certainly isn't open source. It's going to be interesting to see where this one lands. So I did just want to explain that. If you are interested in getting it, obviously the, the Fat Shark pre-orders are now up. They're going to be shipping uh, the week of the 7th of October. Some guys have had it. It does early days. I'm not going to give you my impression on what I've seen so far. I think it would be unfair. It's nothing like the DJI system right now, but it's a beta product. So let's give them some time to get on top of this. They were caught well and truly by, by DJI. They are a multi-billion dollar company who has huge resources behind them to be able to develop what they did with the digital FPV system. You know, it should be added that this wasn't DJI's first rodeo with this. It's actually their seventh digital FPV system. If you take back from Lightbridge 1, Lightbridge 1.5, which was on the Phantom 3 and the Inspire 1, you then had the Lightbridge 2 standalone system. You then had the Lightbridge 2.5 system as part of the Phantom 4 Pro and the Inspire 2. You then had OcuSync, OcuSync 1.5 as part of the digital uh, RE system. OcuSync Original was on the Mavic Original, the Mavic Pro. Then you have OcuSync 2 that we have today. So this system is many, many generations down the line. So people say, oh, it's DJI's first or second attempt if you can count this after the RE system. It isn't. They've been playing at this for a very long time. So it is no wonder they have been able to create this FPV system that they've done. So really, comparison right now is unfair. If you're going to do it, be prepared. If you're going to go in $400, it is early days and you're going to have to take that into account as well in how it works. Um, it, it's interesting, as I said, I'm not going to comment on what I've seen on the footage. It doesn't look great right now, but it is early days. I haven't seen any telemetry on board. Something else I will mention on this is there is going to be no control for the ear end, as I understand it from the ground station. So whereas on the DJI system, you can change the camera profiles, the channels and all of this. You will not be able to do that with the bike frost system. It will be very much like analog that it is a digital transmission one way. And if you want to change settings, you're going to have to land the aircraft and then you're going to have to plug in a little board, which they include with the kit. Um, I don't think there's a picture here of that. Uh, yes, there it is, that little board there to change the settings. 
and then unplug that board and then carry on. So it isn't going to be quite the same as you're used to on the DJI system. Um, obviously, Fat Shark are bundling their own camera with it, and that's why you're actually seeing so many wires, even for an analog HD transmission. You've got obviously signal ground video, and you've got these UART connections that are there to provide the serial data from the camera to ensure that it's authorized to transmit the HD signal because it's got that encoded chip on board that you have to get from DiviMath. Now, at the moment, the DVR for the year end isn't available, but it is listed on the HD0 uh, website here. So if you go onto their website, they do actually show the DVR for the year end. Fat Shark haven't actually uh, mentioned this one yet themselves. I haven't seen that one available to, uh, to purchase. But that's it, that's it. We'll see how it goes. And if you're interested, go check it out. Um, finally, I just wanna quickly talk about this. And I'm doing a video on this uh, currently and I'm gonna be putting it out in the next week. This is the new uh, carrier board from the guys over at Profi CNC and Hex. And it has the ADS-B in antenna on board. And this allows you to pick up uh, aircraft that are using ADS-B, mostly commercial uh, manned aviation. Uh, and display it directly within Mission Planner or whatever ground station you're using that is compatible. Now, I've been testing this, and it is very, very good, actually, I have to admit. Now, this is going to be available as a kit. As I said, I'm going to put a video out on this specifically, hopefully, in the next 24 or so hours. But if you are an Andre Pilot user and you're looking for it, you can get it from 3DXR in the UK. It is available now. They've also got some combination boards in with all of the other cubes as well, if they are available. And I'm actually going to be doing well i am in the middle of doing a build i'm building a rover which is uh it's here again i'm finishing some videos that's at the stage i'm at with the build so far um and i'm going to be doing more videos on this as well we're going to be taking it through with putting a purple cube inside but we're also going to put in the uh, hd system as well we're going to be putting in Hulink on this. So we're going to be using full Hulink, my GoPro, and everything on board with this as well. Um, if you want to know what this is, this is a Prowler. Um, I've been building this the last week, and we've also then got the motor controller on there as well. So um, I, again, I'm starting the build series on this, as I showed on my other video. So if you're interested in that, please do check it out. Really, that is it for this video. Um, I haven't done one like this before, and I'm going to try and do a few more this way in the future, really just to be able to talk to you guys a bit easier. If there's anything you want me to talk about on the channel or any questions about anything I've discussed, please put them in the, the description of this video as well. Post them in there. Um, I, I do try to communicate with you guys as much as I possibly can, can but I, I need to do more of it, and it's something I'd like to build up as well. As I've said, with regards to the Skydio, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so far, it's looking like it's going to be one of the most interesting products I've seen in quite some time. Not DJI Killer. I think it's a new drone in a new market, and it is exactly what the GoPro should have been. <laughs> They've out gopro GoPro. They really, really have, and I think they're going to do very well on this one. I honestly do. Anyway, that's it for this. If there's anything interesting, please put it in the comments of this video. Also, please do subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate all of the guys who subscribe. Click that button as well, that little link. I should have had it up on the screen, shouldn't I? To show you where to do it. Cool, let me do it. Let's 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 be a bit cheeky and go straight to it and show you. So if you're interested, please do subscribe. I'm gonna click on my channel here. So please do hit that subscribe button. You can see I've got a whole host of videos. I've got quite a lot on the channel now. I've been putting out as many as I can in recent times. Um, we're building it. We continue to go. We're heading towards 10,000 subs as well. We're just over 9,000. So I really do appreciate everyone who does. But please do hit that subscribe button. As I said, I put a video out on the new Prowler the other day. And, you know, that subscribe button is hiding down there. Like, there it is. So if you are interested, please do hit it. Give us a like as well. I, I, again, if there's anything you want to talk about, 
please put it in the description. Anyway, that's it for this one. Um, I will probably be back on the SUS News podcast on Tuesday, all being well, if Gary invites me along. I, I really do love going on that with the Gary, Bruce. Uh, I've been extremely lucky to be invited on that as many times as I have. A fantastic set of guys as well. So if you guys don't know please check us out on that usually tuesday night 10 p.m uk time uh depends where else you are in the world obviously it's going to be a little bit different that's it thanks for watching and i will do another one again soon